Hey everybody, today is the second day of January. That means we are reading John chapter 2. So as you read John chapter 2, a lot of these stories may seem familiar, uh, things that we've known. We start off in the first 12 verses talking about uh, the wedding at Cana. And what makes this important is that this is really the first miracle that Jesus does as an adult. Uh, so at this time, he's in his late 20s, early 30s. Uh, he says he's going to a wedding uh, to help a wedding. At this time, probably his mother um, would have helped. Most moms help at weddings, doing kind of the reception, doing things. Jesus probably also helped his mother, maybe being a waiter. Uh, and we run out of wine. And Mary runs to Jesus and says, hey, we're out of wine. And Jesus says, woman, which is so funny, not many names that we call our mom, right? But woman, what do you want me to do? My time has not yet come. At that very such moment, Jesus' time has not come to show his miracles. But we see just moments later that he does it. So did Mary make him do it? No, Mary doesn't make him do anything. Um, it was just that reality that the father then told him that's what we wanted him to do. That's what he needed to do to show his power and faith. And so he says, go and he gets some servants and he goes out and he says, hey, fill up these jars. And what's really interesting is I have a picture uh, of these jars. I'm going to try to insert it into one of these videos so that you can see. Um, they're pretty mammoth. He says it holds 20 to 30 gallons. Uh, so don't get this idea of a mason jar or a bucket. Um, these things are about five foot tall, um, I mean, huge around. I can't put my arms around it. Um, monster. And he says, fill them full of water, and then they take out wine. And then, once again, we're proving that everything that God does and everything that God is about is always the best because it says that um, the bridegroom comes out and says, how will you serve the best wine last? Um, therefore, proving that Jesus is wine was better than the first wine because it was custom that people would serve the best wine first as people began to drink, get a little tipsy, probably drunk at a wedding party. Um, then they didn't care that they were drinking um, cheaper wine um, or less diluted wine. So you kind of have this idea uh, of what is going on. Uh, in the middle uh, kind of section of chapter 2, we see Jesus cleaning the temple. Now you have to remember, it says during Passover, Passover is a week-long festival that every Jew that lived within about 100 miles of Jerusalem had to go. So Jerusalem was packed, full of people. And it says, as he went to the temple, there were people there selling things. Now, that's not, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing, really, because people needed things to go to the Passover feast, right? Um, Passover required them to go to the temple and to sacrifice, sacrifice certain animals um, to their sin, to their family size, to their social status. So most people did not travel with these animals, so they needed to buy them. But what was happening was is they were supposed to buy them in Jerusalem, not in the temple yard. So what was happening, if you think of it in today's structure, is instead of buying them in Warner Robins when they got there, we were selling, uh, the pastors of the church, we were selling things that people needed to worship in the lobby of our church. And we weren't just selling animals, but we were selling them at a high rate. It's kind of like if you go to Disney World or if you go to amusement park, right? Where a Coke is, you know, two bucks, but why is it $7 at amusement park? Why is a Coke $10 at a movie theater? Why is popcorn like $20 at a movie theater? It's like a penny to make, right? It's because that's what people want, what people need, and that what was going on. So if you notice, though, it says that Jesus drove them out with the oxen. And so you can imagine he probably uh, opened some pins, let them go, and basically stamp, caused a stampede, kind of rushing everybody out of the temple courts, which kind of gives a really cool um, kind of visual. And then he takes all the money and he just throws it on the ground, right? He doesn't want it. He doesn't steal it. He doesn't take it. He just throws it on the, on the ground, proving um, that he uh, is that the temple is about him and about his father. And he does this when the Jews come and say, what makes you do this? What's your proof? And he says, 
if you tear down this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. And and that, that priest says, are you kidding me? It took us 46 years to build this temple. The priest thought he was talking about the physical building of the temple, right? The temple mount, the, the place where the whole temple was. Jesus was referring to his body. And you see a little note there, kind of in the last verses, 21 and 22, where it says that later on, right, three years later, when Jesus dies and he resurrects three days later, it instantly would have hit kind of, you know, the disciples like, oh, that's what he meant. Tear his body down, tear the temple down in three days, and in three days he will raise it again. And so even at that point, the disciples didn't get it, but he got it, right? This is kind of a kind of a cool tidbit that's there uh, at the very end of that. And then you have the very ending um, talking about that Jesus knows what is inside of humans. He says that a lot of people came to know him. That doesn't mean they came to salvation. It means that they kind of started to believe, right? It's kind of, you remember the um, parable of the of the seeds on the, on the soil, right? There's some rocky, there's some thorns, uh, there's some shallow soil. There, there was some faith there, but it wasn't real faith. And because of that, Jesus didn't give himself um, up to these things. To these people. What it means is he, he held who he truly was to himself because he knew what was inside of him. He knew that they would turn him over to the Pharisees before it was his time. Hey guys, thank you so much for doing with this, uh, doing this with us. I hope you are enjoying this. Don't forget today uh, to pray for all the pastors uh, in our church, myself, Micah, Brian, Pastor Ed, uh, in our oversight as we move into 2020, guys. I'm so excited we're doing this, and I hope you have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.